Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salah Khan here. And today with what? With the next topic. That is the analysis and characterization of LTI systems using Laplace transform. Now, you know, the heading is quite large. So don't uh, get scared of it. Fine. Uh, the basic meaning of this is what? We want to link the LTI system with the Laplace transform. I already told you we know very well that most of the practical systems, most of the important systems, those are LTI, linear and time invariant as well. And Laplace transform is another uh, uh, very important tool. So we want to check the relation between the two. We just want to link the two together. So how do we start? We start with the basic introduction. You know, if uh, you have a signal X of T and it's uh, applied to an LTI system, having an impulse response H of T, the output to the system that is Y of T, this would be equal to the convolution of the input and the impulse response. This I am talking about the time domain representation. Similarly, now if I have a frequency domain representation, if I have the Laplace transform of the uh, input signal and this is applied now to an LTI system having the Laplace transform of the impulse response H of S which is the, uh, the system function which is the system function uh, so the output now y of s we know very well this would be equal to x of s multiplied h of s this is from the convolution property we know this very well that in the frequency domain the if you have a time domain multiplication convolution the frequency domain you have multiplication so this is a simple representation of an LTI system in the time domain and in the frequency domain. Now I want to check the causality and stability of an LTI system with respect to what? With respect to the system function H of S. With respect to the system function H of S. So. I would give it over here the causality and stability with respect to the system function that is H of S this is unknown so i would the next discussion would be about the causality and stability keeping in mind the roc the laplace transform the system function fine first causality first causality so what do we have in time domain, what is the definition for a causal system? For a causal system, what do we have in time domain? The impulse response would be 0 for t less than 0. H of t is 0 for what? For t less than 0. Which means what? That this is a right-sided signal. This is a right-sided signal. Is that fine? It is. This is the definition of causality in the time domain. Now if you take the corresponding uh, what? The corresponding system function that is the Laplace transform of this. So H of T has a corresponding Laplace transform H of S. This Laplace transform, the associated ROC must be the right half plane of the S plane. Only then will the system be causal. What? That the ROC associated, this must be what? This must be right half plane.
if I write it in words, if I write it in words, so I write that the ROC associated with a causal LTI system is the right half S plane. And now let me clear one thing again. The right half S plane, if I mention over here, it does not necessarily mean that it would start at zero and it would end at positive infinity. Fine. What would it mean? It would mean that it can start anywhere. Maybe it start at the negative side, but it would cover, then it would cover the entire area till the positive infinity. It may start somewhere after t equal to zero and it goes till t equal to s equal to infinity. That is the right half plane. The right half does not, uh, if, I, if I show it pictorial over here. What do I mean by the right half? So the right half does not necessarily mean only that this is the right half over here in this discussion. It could also mean like this that if the ROC is of this form or it could also maybe it could also mean like this. So this one we would confirm but these two are confirmed. Fine. This is if, if for the ROC associated with the causal LTI system is the right half plane. This is what it is. The inverse statement, the converse of this is not always true. The converse of this is not always true. This is uh, uh, what you have. This is the basic definition. That if you have a causal LTI system, the, the, the ROC of the Laplace transform would be the right half plane. But for this system, the converse is not necessarily true and what's the converse the converse is that if you have a right half plane roc it does not necessarily mean that the system is causal is that fine it is let me write over here if the roc is a right half plane the system is causal so this is the statement that is not true always this may be true of course this may be true but this is not absolutely true when is it true so i will tell you i will tell you so this is a statement you put across this is something important okay fine but what does this mean what does this mean it guarantees that the impulse response is right sided this means what that the impulse response is right sided this could guarantee this this statement it guarantees what Guarantee spelling may be wrong, but this is not an English class. It guarantees that impulse response is right sided. Is that fine? Now if I ask you, if this is an impulse response 1, H of T, this is an impulse response another, h of t which of this is causal which is not yes please first pause the video do a comment then start it okay i hope you're done what this one is causal yes why because it is zero for the negative time and non-zero for the positive sign whereas this is non-causal why because this is also zero for some positive value of time so this is non-causal right now you can see if anybody will write. Uh, so do not delete the comment, of course. If you were wrong also, that doesn't matter. Now, uh, when is this statement always true? The ROC associated with the causal system, this is always true, but the converse is not. So when 
word is the converse absolutely true right when is the converse absolutely true so i would write over here when is the converse absolutely true so that is the case of when your Laplace transform or the system function is rational when it is rational so I would write it over here that uh, for a for a for a system with rational system function For a system with a rational system function, what do we have? The causality of the system is equivalent. Causality of the system is equivalent to what? To the ROC being the right half lane. And by the right half plane, you would also know, we already know this, that this would be right to the rightmost pole. This would be right to the rightmost pole. And this we know again very well. So this is now what we have concluded from over here. If I just give you an overview. If you have a causal system, right, if you have a causal system, then uh, you have uh, what? You take the system function, the ROC must, will be the right half plane, point number one. Point number two, if you have an ROC to be the right half plane, the system may or may not be causal. It would only be causal when, when the system function is rational and the ROC is lying right to the rightmost pole, then the system would be causal, otherwise it would not be causal and that is it. That is it about the causality. If we have some examples, if, we, if I just, just give you an overview, if I have h of t, that is exponential of negative t u of t, h of t is exponential of negative t u of t so have a look isn't this system causal it is why because the impulse response is right sided the corresponding laplace transform is 1 upon s plus 1 with sigma greater than minus 1 this is the roc so have a look the roc this is minus 1 this would be the roc of it isn't it like this? So which means it's lying to right to the rightmost pole. It's covering the entire right half plane. This system is causal. This system is causal. Now, uh, if you have uh, h of t is exponential of negative and the absolute of t. So, would this system be causal? No. Why? Because the impulse response is double sided. It's existing for t less than 0 as well. What is the corresponding Laplace transform? So, we've already calculated in the examples video. Negative 2 upon s squared plus 1, right? Negative 2 upon s squared minus 1. So, I believe that we have calculated this, but if we have not, so I would try to make an examples video and we would cover that in that. Over here, if we solve it, so it would take time and we don't have that. So, the Laplace transform is this. So, which means that the, uh, the ROC would be what? The ROC would lie in between negative 1 and positive 1. So, have a look. If this is a negative 1, this is positive 1. Your ROC would lie over here. So, is it covering the right half plane up till infinity? No. So, this is a non-causal system. This is a non-causal system and this is a causal system. Fine. It is. Now, if you have, uh, uh, you know what? If you have uh, in, in uh, like this, if you are given H of S, which is exponential of S divided by S plus 1. So, this is a, a rational one, right? Right. What do I need to do? Is the system causal? So, I would check it by finding the impulse response again. 
So you find the what? Uh, you find the corresponding one. If you have an exponential of negative t u of t, so uh, let me do it. Exponential of negative t u of t, you have uh, 1 over s plus 1 for that, right? And then when you uh, time shift it, so you apply the time shifting property as well. And where do we have, what's the time shifting property? x of t plus t naught would have a corresponding exponential of s t naught x of s. Right? So you do it yourself, you would get the corresponding uh, function as this uh, exponential of negative t plus 1 into u of t plus 1. So t plus 1 means what? That it would be not 0 from 0 to 1, right? Or would it mean that it is, no, uh, this would be uh, non-zero from negative 1 to 0. This signal would start from negative 1. This would start from negative 1. So which means again this is a non-causal system. Is that fine? So have a look, uh, you know here a time shifting property was used so you should not confuse it that I said that if it's right, uh, right half plane although the ROC was uh, you know the right half plane it was like this uh, negative 1 and this was the ROC but uh, still uh, the system is non-causal why because the time shifting property was used it was not a simple function so you should keep this in mind and you should not get confused in this as I did as well. Anyways, what would be an anti-causal system? So you know that very well. And if I write it somewhere, if I have space, so yes, I have a lot of space over here. Uh, in the anti-causal system, just I would write the definition. So anti-causal system would be that system for which the impulse response would be zero for positive value of time. H of t is equal to zero for t greater than 0. Isn't it like this? It is. Now you know the uh, h of t would be uh, a left sided right. So the system function ROC would have to be the left half plane. The converse is not true. And then again h of s is rational. Left of the left of the system would be anti-causal. So for this the ROC would be left half plane. ROC would be the left half plane. So exactly opposite of this case. The ROC associated with anti causal LTI system is the left half plane. The inverse is not true. Fine. Then uh, for a system with rational function, anti causality is equivalent to the ROC being the left half plane. That is left to the leftmost pole. And this is about the and this is the whole discussion on causality. Let me remove the board and then we move on to stability. Okay, the next is stability. The next is stability. So how do you link the stability of an LTI system with the system function? And system function is the H of S, which is the Laplace transform of the impulse response. Fine. An LTI system is stable if it's if the ROC of its system function includes the J omega axis. And you know that, uh, what does this mean? This means that if real of S is 0. Yes? And we know this very well again. How? We know this from the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform is calculated on the J omega axis. Fourier transform is the Laplace transform calculated on the J omega axis. So if you are calculating, able to calculate the Fourier transform, this means the system is converging. This means the system is stable. Yes. 
that is very simple that is very simple uh, so you can uh, you know say this that the Fourier transform if the Fourier transform exists the system is stable how because the Fourier transform of x of t is what is the Laplace transform of x of t calculated at uh, at, at, at what at, at what at s equal to j omega right so if the system is stable if the Fourier transform exists the system is stable Isn't it like this? It is. Let us have some examples. Let us have some examples. You know what do I mean by including the j omega axis? If this is the ROC, this is the j omega axis, right? If this is the ROC. so let's let's continue the discussion if h of s is s minus 1 upon s plus 1 into s minus 2 the ROC is not known the ROC is not known so we know very well what could be the cases we know very well what could be the case is first I, I, I draw the pole zero plot this is j omega one is at negative one the other is at a positive two right similarly I draw it three times one is at a negative one one is at a positive two similarly again one is at a positive two one is at a negative one so the ROC we could have three cases and you know that very well the first could be that it lies to the right of the right most pole if it lies to the right of the right most pole so this would be like this so what is this ROC telling us that the it is covering the entire s plane and it's right to the rightmost pole it's covering the right half plane this means that the system is causal it's not stable this is prob probability number one the second the second could be that it lies to the left of the leftmost pole which means like this so now the ROC is covering the left half plane, it's lying to the left of the leftmost pole. This is anti causal. Again, it's not including the j omega axis, it's not stable. Now, the, the, the final probability the final probability is uh, that if you have what? If you have uh, it in, if it's a strip in between the two poles, if it's a strip in between the two poles, so over here what do you have? It's neither causal nor anti causal, but it's stable. It's stable. And the corresponding impulse responses are also given in the book. The corresponding impulse responses are given in the book. Uh, what do we have? H of t is uh, 2 by 3 exponential of negative t u of t. Yes, for this case, what do we have? Uh, stable. So in this case, H of t is given as uh, 2 by 3 exponential of negative t u of t minus 1 over 3 exponential of 2t u of minus t fine similarly similarly in the other case what do you have uh, in the first case in the second case anti-causal system 
anti-causal system we have H of t is equal to negative 2 by 3 exponential of negative t plus 1 over 3 exponential of 2t u of minus t and similarly in the first case h of t is given to be 2 by 3 exponential negative t plus 1 over 3 exponential 2t u of t so anyways we do not need this but a causal system with rational function is stable if and only if all the poles of h of s lie in the left half of the s plane and that is all the poles have negative real parts now again another point another point so let me write it over here a causal system with rational system function a causal system with rational system function is stable if and only if all the poles of h of s lie in the left half plane all the poles of h of s lie in the left half s plane that is all of them have negative real parts that is all of them have negative real parts image then it could be anything they could be located anywhere because they are a complex number so this pole could be located over here as well somewhere right anyways uh, so we have a, a, a little graphs I believe so let me discuss them before we finish the discussion so I already have discussed that stable causal stable causal yes no so let me discuss over here if we have an ROC of something like this if we have an ROC something like this so have a look it's lying to the right, right half plane right to the right most pole this is causal it's not including the j omega axis it is unstable i've written it over here fine next next if i have it like this if it's a strip in between the two poles so it's including the j omega axis which means this is stable and it's neither causal nor it's anti-causal so this is a non-causal system and this I have shown over here but anyways I did it by mistake so then the final the final ROC is like this if if you have an ROC like this so this would be stable why because it's including the geomag axis and it would be causal why because it's lying to the rightmost pole and it's covering the right half plane similarly if i have it like this so i have a look it's lying left to the leftmost pole this is anti-causal and this is covering the j omega axis this is stable that is it that should be it now i believe you can i have covered the i have covered all the possible possibilities of what uh, of the roc on which you could say that this on the basis of which you could say system is stable unstable causal non-causal anti-causal many things that is it that is it for this video i have uh, had a lot of patience in this hot weather i recorded two videos without a fan anyways no problem see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye